It has been a very long time since I was able to do any NASCAR Racing 2003 content or NR 2003 content here at Knee Pit Gaming. And there are many reasons for that. Uh, the most important reason is that I've had a hard time keeping the game up and functional. With it being a 2003 game, uh, it was never designed for Windows 10 or anything of the like. So for whatever reason, uh, Windows updates or any number of other updates on the computer uh, have broken the game from time to time. I would have to spend the time to get it back up and running. And after a while, it just became more trouble than it was worth at the time. But a couple of things have happened recently that have really gotten me excited uh, for the game once again. Number one, I found um, a, a NoCD EXE that seems to have provided a long-term solution to Windows 10 and hopefully beyond that will keep the game up and functional and will not be constantly uh, broken. And number two, NASCAR has decided to make some changes in 2019. They're going to increase the drag, increase the downforce, and greatly reduce the amount of horsepower. So that's going to really change things, and that really sparked uh, my love for physics editing in this particular game once again. So here we are. BR 2019. We're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the project is going to be on a very broad level. I have done uh, quite a bit of testing. Numerous hours have been spent uh, doing some physics tweaks. So we're going to talk about what, what it is and, and what the project is not, most importantly. Uh, I've already started putting together uh, the structure that I want to use for uh, releasing various mod files. Uh, I would love very much to keep this as simple as possible for my own reasons. I, the, the least amount of work this will take and time it will take from me uh, the better. So uh, that will be a major consideration as we go throughout this. What you're looking at on the screen is one of the files that I have put together here at the very beginning of the project. And that is some basic questions. The first couple of questions are going to familiarize you with me. If you're not familiar, um, I am the same BR that released the, uh, the track edits many years ago uh, to add multiple grooves to the track. At the time, I didn't really know any other way to differentiate what I was doing from the baseline tracks other than to add my initials at the very end. So that's why you see those uh, on the end of various tracks from Daytona BR, uh, Talladega BR, and so on. Question number two is, how are Knee Pit Gaming and Brian Ring connected? We are one and the same, essentially. Uh, if you're not familiar, I've been doing this channel for a couple of years now. I forget exactly how long, and I am very appreciative for the success that the channel has had, uh, covering various games that I enjoy playing from uh, strategy to uh, a lot of survival type stuff, and then of course, racing. So the goals for this project, uh, basically the 2019 package had me intrigued as it is a, um, I believe is going to be a large departure from what NASCAR has been up to this point, and I believe is a strong statement about where they want to go in the future. Uh, I think they've heard the the rumblings from various manufacturers and so on that uh, they don't have much interest in NASCAR unless certain things can be met. One of those, of course, is brand identity, and that's why they continue to change uh, the style of car that they run. They want to provide as much brand identity. But also, cost is a major uh, incentive or decentive here, depending on um, how you look at it. So I really wanted to, to use that as a baseline. By no means am I trying to exactly replicate what we're going to see on TV in the 2019 Cup season. I am certainly not going to do that because there are parts of the package that I simply don't agree with, and it's not very fun for me to create um, a package and a mod and go through all the time and trouble to create something that I really don't like. So I'm going to basically pick and choose the parts of it that I do like, include those, and again, try to keep things as simple as possible. So I'm going to be starting with the 2019 configurations, but I am going to also have a focus on, as well as the things like tire wear, which I am very interested in. We should have uh, quite a bit of tire wear, two to three seconds per lap on the bigger tracks in general. 
Uh, I'm going to be talking about driver ratings um, and as well as other factors that are from the track INI files, uh, maybe some LP files, setups, all of those sorts of things will be included. In fact, before we go any further, let me actually drag uh, some of the beginning file structure out and show you exactly what I'm looking at currently. I've got a section on driver ratings, which is going to provide some example ratings that I've put together uh, on a tiered system, as well as a, uh, a template here showing the basic ratings and the way I derive my own ratings. They, they will have a major impact on your experience with not only the mod, but NASCAR Racing 2003 in general. So I will also be providing uh, various types of setups, uh, example setups, any setups that uh, the testers might want to make available to everyone. Those will be included as well. Uh, and of course, the modified EXE. This is where all the physics changes will be confined to. Other changes that will come in the form of uh, track specific changes Changes will be basically uh, mostly around tire wear, tire heat, and a lot of AI behavior type tweaks. Then we're going to get into track files. Here you can see some of the tracks that I will be supporting uh, very early on. Naturally, you're going to see BR tracks in here because those are ones that I have the most familiarity with. And then I'll be adding a few others such as this Las Vegas 2014 along the way. And here in just a moment, we'll talk about how uh, you can get involved as well as make some uh, suggestions as well. But you can see here, uh, in fact, this FAQ and README is what we're actually looking at on the screen right now. So I've already started to put together the package and have a vision of how I want this to go in a very broad sense. So now let's go ahead and continue on with uh, the questions. Will my experience be different than yours as it relates to the performance of both the player car as well as the AI? And the, the quick answer is yes, absolutely. It will be. There is absolutely no way that I can provide you with all of the information and all of the exact files um, and experience level and so on to give you the exact experience that I receive from the game. My goal is to get you as close as I possibly can. Uh, and that means providing a number of files, whether it's the modified EXC, uh, as well as track INI files, setups, and so on. But just keep in mind that there's no way I can give you the exact same experience as what I have. When will this be released? Of course, that's the question everybody wants to know, including me, because the simple answer is whenever I am comfortable with its status. My plan is to do this in stages uh, that we'll talk about a little bit more as we get down to some of these uh, other questions. But I want to go in stages, and as I am uh, able to make tweaks and I'm uh, happy with the state of certain tracks and certain uh, styles of tracks and so on, then we'll move on and broaden that list to include more tracks and, and that type of thing. But there's no, absolutely no way that I can give you an idea of when it will be released. Okay, when will the testing begin? Um, as I mentioned, it's going to be a, a tiered release and how many tiers, how often, and all that kind of thing will basically depend on the amount of interest that I get from you guys. If there's very little interest, then I might shelve the whole thing. I'll just keep all of this work uh, for myself and not go through all of the trouble to, uh, to do any release at all. But if there is a lot of potential support for the mod uh, and a lot of desire to see it out there in the open, then I will start to take on testers and we'll take it uh, from there. So now that brings us to number seven, a very important question. What are the requirements to be a, uh, a person who tests this mod? And there are five basic requirements, and none of these are difficult. I'm not necessarily looking for the fastest drivers or anything like that. I'm looking for these five things. First of all, you have to have a working copy of NR2003. If you have that, you're good to go. Number two, you have to be willing to test specific items at my request. The purpose of a tester isn't simply to get the files before anyone else. The purpose of them is to help me to test various things and essentially multiply the amount of time 
that can be spent testing uh, different things beyond what I have personally to spend on different things. Uh, common requests will be things like uh, focus on a particular track uh, in qualifying trim just to see what kind of times you guys are able to run uh, in addition to what I'm able to, to run. So that'll give me an idea of where things are. Fuel runs at certain tracks so I can get an idea of tire wear. Those are the types of things that I will need from testers. The better feedback I get from the testers, the better uh, I can make ultimately the physics and the sooner we can get this project out to everyone. So if you have no interest uh, in this project beyond getting the files early, then please do not request to be a tester. All it does is slow down the entire process when you have people who receive the files but give no feedback. Moving on to number three, you need to have a working knowledge of the NASCAR Racing 2003 file structure. You need to have installed mods. You need to have made changes to files or replaced files, that type of thing. I'll be supplying you various files that we looked at just briefly uh, a few moments ago here in the file structure. I'll be providing those files. You'll need to go and download certain tracks if you don't already have them, uh, and also to place these different files in the proper folders. So if you don't know how to do that, then now's a great time to learn how to do so, or this isn't going to be the project and certainly the testing project for you. Moving on to number four, you have to have the ability to be trusted. And this is basically with everything in life. You want to be, uh, be able to have other people trust you. In this particular context, I do not want testers sharing project files with anyone else. Now, a lot of people are going to look at that as a punishment. It is not. The reason I'm doing that is because if you've ever been involved with uh, any sort of of project like this where you're going to release various versions, then you know it can be a huge headache if you have multiple versions floating around. It only causes confusion. So again, if that type of thing happens, then it slows down my progress and it slows down the progress of the project as a whole. So we don't want multiple versions floating around out there. We want to keep it confined to a few people at the beginning so that we can uh, very easily control the versioning of the mod. Okay, you, uh, you need to have the ability to manage game files. And I put this in there separate from the working knowledge uh, entry simply because I want to reiterate, and you will see this uh, in uh, the inner workings of the mod in the different uh, files that I create. You'll see this reiterated quite a bit. It is strongly recommended to make backups of all files before you install any of these project files. And as I mentioned at the very end, I cannot emphasize this enough. The last thing I want someone doing is taking project files and overriding their default files and having no way to go back or to run both simultaneously. That's the last thing in the world I want. So you need to be able to manage your game files and manage backups and so on. Again, if you're not comfortable doing that, that's perfectly fine, but this project will not be for you, either in its testing form or in its final form, because I cannot recommend strongly enough that you need to have backups. I've been in a position where I did not have backups. I thought I did, but it turns out I didn't. And it was a painstaking process to try to get that information back into its original form, if you can at all. So I do not recommend anyone doing that. So let's say that you get through all five of these requirements and you are ready to go. You are perfectly fine uh, being a willing participant and sharing great feedback as well as the others. Then great. You've met these requirements. How do you apply to be a tester? And for right now, we're going to keep this very simple. Simply send an email to the address you see on your screen. That is the official email address of Knee Pit Gaming. So it can also be found on the main page of the YouTube channel, as well as the about screen on the YouTube channel. So there are a few different places to find this email address. But what you should do is send an email to that address. And in the subject line, you need to separate it by saying BR 2019 testing. That should be in the subject line. And then the body of the email should contain the things listed below. Number one, 
we need a preferred name that you use for racing. Racing. I do not require that you use your real name, but we do need to have some way of referring to each other. So a preferred name that you like to use will be great. Um, and this should go without saying, but unfortunately, it needs to be said. No adult language, no profanity, nothing like that. Um, one of the quickest ways, and perhaps the quickest way, to get yourself removed from consideration as a tester is to use any sort of adult language or profanity. I am not interested in that. This channel is not about that. So that will very quickly get your, uh, your listing thrown out. Then the second uh, thing I need to know is what is your favorite track and track types? And I've just given you an example here. Your favorite track may be Atlanta, but you also really love short tracks in general. Any type of short track, you love it. So just anything like that. It doesn't matter what your favorite track or track type is. This simply gives me an idea of where you are probably uh, better and where you prefer to spend your time. This particular project will not focus on every track imaginable. So I need to have an idea of what your favorites are and what your level of comfort is with the different uh, types of tracks. Third is your level of setup knowledge. This isn't necessarily about speed, but I need to know if you're comfortable creating your own setup or taking a baseline setup and tweaking it for your own needs. That is very important for the purposes of the testing in this mod. And of course, the reason should be obvious. If you're not able to make your own setups or make tweaks to the setups uh, to fit your needs and your driving style, then you're going to have a hard time as the physics change on the different types of tracks. You're going to have a hard time keeping up. So again, it's not about speed. It's about making sure that you can match the setup to your driving style. I will attempt to provide baseline setups as much as I can, but again, you need to have a certain level of setup knowledge. And then finally, the fourth item is feel free to throw in any additional uh, information that is specifically related to NASCAR Racing 2003. Um, and this can really be anything. I couldn't possibly think of everything, so this is a a catch-all. Anything you would like for me to know that might help with the testing of this mod is certainly much appreciated. Okay, let's move on to number nine. How will I choose those who get to test? Uh, and the very simple answer is uh, it will be a combination. First of all, there's going to be some random aspect to it. How much of it is random will depend on the interest in the project. As I mentioned, if there's a very low interest in the project, then I may not do any of this at all simply to save myself the trouble. But if there is a lot of interest, then there could be a very large random element to this because I simply can't take everyone at one time. Uh, again, we're going to use the tier system as much as possible to phase people in uh, and increase the amount of feedback we're getting as things go along. So we will have of course, a random element to it, and then also a combination of factors based on what you put in the body of the email that I receive. Uh, again, it's not necessarily any right or wrong answers. The only wrong answer we already talked about would be the adult language and, and profanity. Um, I am not interested in that, but other than that, there are no right or wrong answers. I don't care what your favorite track is, whether it matches mine or it doesn't. That's not a problem. Um, I simply need a certain level of information about each tester. Okay, let's move on to number 10, which tracks will be supported. Now, the reason I put this, uh, I'm not going to be releasing any tracks directly with the mod, but I, the reason I talk about which tracks are going to be supported is simply because I would love nothing more than to be able to make the changes to the exe file and have that applicable and fit every track in every possible scenario. Unfortunately, that's not realistic, and that's why I'm going to have to include additional files along the way. So the different levels of support will be based on, uh, and you see here things such as the track I and I. Uh, we might have to throw in some LP files, um, as well as some AI uh, type tweaks, including AI setups, and so on. Unfortunately, we're going to have to do this because as I change the physics, the default settings 
from various types of tracks, whether they're default or mod tracks, they're simply not going to be optimal. So what I'm going to attempt to do through our testing process is attempt to optimize those settings. So once again, you will need to download certain tracks that we are going to support in the mod. However, I'm not going to offer those tracks available for download. You'll need to find those. Uh, and I'll give you some links in the documentation uh, that I use for finding these things. So it shouldn't be all that difficult, but just keep in mind, there will be certain tracks that I simply can't support because we will run out of time. But any support we do to tracks will simply be to maximize the experience. Okay, let's move on to number 11. Can I request a certain track be added for support? And the quick answer is absolutely. Uh, in fact, I think that is a great idea and something I want to add. But just keep in mind, I can't add every uh, or support for every possible modded track out there. What I'm going to try to do is is find one, perhaps two versions of a particular track and support those just to give a little bit of option as much as I possibly can. But keep in mind that uh, making a request to have a certain track supported doesn't guarantee that I can get to it. If you are the creator of an author of a particular track or set of tracks, then by all means, let me know if you would like to have those uh, supported. I really appreciate hearing from directly from the track um, authors in these cases. So feel free to do that. And I would love to work with you as much as I possibly can to make that happen. I want this to be as inclusive as possible, but we just have to keep in mind there are certain realistic expectations uh, and limitations for time. And then finally, will this project alter the performance of the default game? And I'm going to put a resounding yes in all caps here. And the reason I'm doing that is because yes, there are ways around having these new files affect your default game, but I want to let those who may not be as experienced uh, in managing the game files like we talked about earlier, I want to give you a way to understand right up front that you need to have backups and you need to understand the file structure. Otherwise, you're going to get yourself in a lot of trouble. So, once again, strongly advised that you make backups of any and all files, whether for you that might mean you run two separate instances of the game. You have default version of the game that is untouched, and then you have a modded version of of the game. That is completely up to you, but I do want to get that out of the way that the last thing I want to have happen, as I mentioned earlier, is to have someone overwrite default files and have no way to get them back. That is not what I want and not the purpose of this particular mod. I hope that we can have quite a bit of fun. The ultimate goal of this is for me to have fun. I'm creating a mod that suits my needs and I'm willing to listen to suggestions, but just understand that ultimately it's going to be my decision what gets included and what changes get made. So to summarize all of this, um, I'm very excited about this project, very excited to get back to work on uh, NR2003. Uh, it's something I've always had a passion for for many, many years. And so I'm very excited to get back at that. If you have questions about things that I did not cover uh, here on your screen in today's video. Uh, by all means, put a comment down in uh, the comment section and let me know. And I will try to answer those as best I can. I tried to hit the basics in today's video, but of course, there's no way that I could answer every possible uh, question and situation. So with that in mind, I am very excited to get this thing going and We'll see where it goes. Get those emails coming in uh, for testing if you're interested. Thank you very much for joining me and stay tuned as we will continue our progress of BR 2019.